Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly a senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends. And welcome to this brand new day. And remember, no matter who you are, you are valid. And I had done something with my hand, and my finger here keeps cramping if I do that with my hand. So I decided to keep my finger in a cramped position. Now it keeps pulling downward because it's cramped. It's like, oh, stop cramping. Uh, I can hold it upward and do things with it. Maybe that'll make it stop. I'm going to be showing, hopefully by this point, when I go like this. Please disregard the mess, like the boxes and stuff like that. But here is my room air conditioner. It is about the same size as the dual fan things I have in the windows right now. My plan is to put that in that window, ignore that stuff, in that window, and keep that one, that fan in that window. It's kind of choppy whoppy as I move the camera, so I'm hoping it hasn't gotten just unviewable. But, of course, with the parts, you know, there's the air conditioner itself, and then there's the insulation parts. Look at them insulation parts. I can't screw things into the walls here. So I may have to jury rig some stuff, but I went and talked to the guy in charge of the facility here, and he said that it gets really hot. Please go buy yourself an air conditioning unit. So there we go. A video of my brand new air conditioning unit that I walked to Walmart with my walker, of course, and back. I use my walker when I feel shaky and when I have to carry anything, and especially that air conditioning unit is big and it's heavy so i couldn't have been able to carry it just on my own i needed my walker shucks when i'm but if i'm buying anything more than like four something odd cans of say chili <coughs> i need to bring my walker because that's just too heavy both because of the nerve compression and heavy for my lower back i carry big stuff and it's not good Yay. But past that, I have been just surviving and hopefully you have done the same. I had therapy today. And sometimes we talk about a lot of heavy duty stuff. Some days we talk about just light and fluffy stuff. But he as a therapist knows that there are times when the best therapy is just having a nice conversation. And there are plenty of times that just having a nice conversation has been something that has really helped. <coughs> ah. Summer days, so my throat is always sore. Gotta love that. Again, it appears to be like my only real hay fever symptom. Because I go walking through various fields to get places just because I want to walk through fields. And some of them have... Uh, what is it? Scotch broom? Scotch boom? I can't remember what it is, but it's this... It's got a low base where the branches come out of it, and they've got these bright yellow flowers, and they are everywhere. They're an invasive species in the Pacific Northwest. They are everywhere. And when a lot of them are blooming, even if you, your system doesn't mind the pollen, which mine doesn't, your eyes can still get so gummy because there's so much pollen in the air. Your tears get filled with pollen. So it's great that way. But I get like a sore throat and that's great. But past that, I don't really seem to suffer any heat fever stuff. So I've gone out. I'm hoping to go again. But it is, I piled up so much stuff in front of my, my clock. It is 2.06. It's going to be 20 minutes for this, and then longer than that for editing, and then the rendering time, and then uploading. So, when I do go out, it's going to be later. And I've got to get that, that air conditioning unit in. Which I went, uh, did I mention this part? How I'd gone to talk to the unit manager about it? And when I said, you know, can I get, you know, a, a air ma window mounted air conditioning unit? And he just said, yes, yes. Those cottages are going to get really hot during the summer. Yes, go get one. 
so not going to be an issue. It's just the thing I have has a mounting system. That's where I talked about it. The mounting system with screws, and I don't know how, because he's talked about if you want to put something up and involves screwing things into the wall, yeah, don't even bother asking. His answer is already no. So I'll have to see what and how it comes up with the window. I'm used up a lot of my spoons today just by going there and back so I'm not quite sure. I rewarded myself by having some candy so now I don't know if the heavy feeling that I have that tells me I'm pretty sleepy is because I've eaten a lot of candy. Oh, I'm so ashamed of myself honestly. Well I'll talk about that or if it's because of at this time I tend to get Because this side is starting to droop more and, and I don't like that, I get all suctiony bubbly here and it's really irritating. Oh, I knew I was going to get distracted. Oh well, it's not important. It was just talking about how awful the world is. So when I got the air conditioning unit, hopefully I'm going to be able to get it put in the window with no issues. I'm not going to worry about it today. Here we are. I used up a lot of my spoons already. So. <clears throat> We are pretty much set. I don't have a whole lot going on for the day, but I'm gonna try and do some things. They aren't heavy duty things, just more because the day is mostly gone. So I started off the day with therapy and it's a therapy day which drags stuff up and I'm never really much good for anything on therapy days afterwards. Not because it's like, oh my god, what got dragged up, uh, no. But when stuff does get pulled up that hasn't been pulled up for a while, because you don't just pull up a single memory. Everything in your head is pulled together. So when you pull it up, it drags a bunch of other things up with it. You gotta give time for everything to settle back down. And that's usually the rest of the day. And... <clears throat> because I can't shower every single day. And the older you get, the fewer showers that way you should take. When you're younger, you shouldn't even shower every day. Culturally, we have that. Now, when you're younger, younger, and <coughs> passing through puberty and all that, yeah, you better be taking showers, otherwise, you're, oh, you're gonna smell so bad. So, there are times when you should. But the older you get, no, you shouldn't. And when you get like in the 60s and up, you really should be only showering once a week for your skin. Because showering, as clean as you get, and clean, as clean as you get is incredibly drying out for your skin. And even if you moisturize immediately afterwards, you're still causing that damage to your skin. And you're not even on a microorganism level getting clean because when you step out of a shower you have more microorganisms on you than when you started the shower so that's not really that way but it's a, a huge cultural thing but as long as you can like i do with washcloths and i sponge bath i call it sponge bath what take washcloths and I wash from here, which means my hair gets a good scrubbing every day, all the way down to my knees. So <clears throat> things stay clean, but now I can't even remember what I was talking about. You do have my most sincere apologies. Well, I wonder if this has anything to do with that. Even though this wouldn't, I've also I mentioned this yesterday, I believe been taking melatonin tablets for the past couple of days. Two of these a night gives you five milligrams. The last time I had tried them, several decades back, maybe even as far as 25 or 30 years ago, I remember I tried that because I was having a lot of trouble sleeping. That was also, I believe, during my active alcoholic phase. And I tried it and I slept great for about an hour and it was really good sleep for an hour and then i went wide awake for the rest of that night and that being kind of an unpleasant feeling i didn't take them anymore 
but these last couple nights I've been taking them, they've been working well. I have been sleeping, well, I fall asleep pretty quickly, and then it is either my bladder that wakes me up sometime in the middle of the night, or I wake up around 6 o'clock, which is the time I seem to be waking up. I even went to bed around 11 one night, I think, or at least I've tried. So, I am definitely turning into an old man. Yay, because that too is one of the things we talk about, where I've mentioned to him, of course, there's our stages in life, there's we all, every one of us, have a good beginning, a middle, and an end. And each one of those stages can be broken down. You know, in your beginning, you have your beginning when you're born, and your end when you pass into the middle. And then the middle has three stages, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Now in the last stage, the end, when it's broken up into three stages, you've got the beginning of the end. And when that time runs out, you've got the middle of the end. And that's about age 56 to 64. And when you hit 64, you're hitting the end of the end stage. There ain't no uphills after that. I got about three years before I turn 64. At which point I enter the end of the end of my life. And yeah, like I mentioned to him, I, I've grown rather fond of existing. And I'm in no great rush for that uh, phenomenon to end. Now, I may be lucky. I mean, I have been amazingly, amazingly lucky with my body. I should not have survived my alcoholism. I survived my alcoholism. I should not have my A1C, for it, which is your blood sugar, and my actual blood sugars be good because I eat horrible stuff. Like, I just ate, like, um, maybe 1,500 calories worth of sour gummy candy to reward myself for walking through the heat to get that air conditioner. My A1C is rock solid in the middle. My blood sugars are great. It shouldn't be. I have been 20 years ago I was told that I've got my both of my kidneys are filled with stones okay nothing's ever happened so hopefully that'll continue and my genetic father he died at 81 so maybe 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 I'll last past 74. Because after all, in the United States at least, they figure that the difference between having, being of at least medium income and up, and medium income and down, the difference in lifespans is about 20 years. Those people uh, from medium and up live on average about 20 years longer than these down here. So, thumbs up for my being economically priced out of all housing but this little cracker box and thank God it's here. So, yeah! Now, I'm not trying to be depressing even though I'm trying to be depressing. Because <laughs> not everything is depressing. Not everything is awful. And as I told my therapist, uh, I'm on two medications for off-label use. One of, them, one of them, good old gabapentin, one of them is Buprion, and then it's extended release. It's an antidepressant, 150 milligrams. I take that on a daily basis. If there's any difference in my mood, gosh, I wonder why. Just because I'm taking it for its off-label use doesn't mean the primary use for it suddenly goes away. 
no, I'm going to be having antidepressant effects from the antidepressant I'm taking. So thank goodness for that. Because through the past, my depression has been bad enough that I'm lucky I am still here. And thankful for being here. What else have I done? Well, I want to talk about this. For, for people that have watched this far into the video, thank you so very much. You are beautiful and awesome. But if you've watched this far and you don't watch any of the gaming videos, like the Fabled Lands one that I just did, that series is done because the main character died, died. And I want to talk about that because I made it much more brutal than is directly given to you. But the point of it being a book with just a few sentences for description is your imagination is supposed to take over from here. And what happened was my character met her end, but had also made a pact at a temple and was resurrected, brought back to life and immediately dashed out to go to the bad place and try to do her quest again. And she ran into some monsters that took her out and down fast and hard. And it was a troll and two goblins. Now, if they are as barbaric is shown in the illustrations, then it would make sense that the ending for Jaluda, her name, that I gave was approximately, you know, after she was downed, well, all that was left when they were done devouring her corpse was just some blood stains in the grass, a few chunks of bone here and there, and nothing else left to show that she had ever existed. And that's what happens. So Jaluda, uh, she was just eaten, eaten by a cave troll and some goblins. That happens. I mean, somebody has to be eaten by goblins. Hopefully not me, but somebody should. Not necessarily should. Let me take that back. I don't think people should actually be eaten by creatures. That, that, that's bad. Especially since I qualify as a people. <laughs> Which means I am in the uh, possible victim pool. So no, I, I don't really want creatures to go out and devour innocent human beings because one of those innocent human beings would possibly be me. So no, no. There's other reasons, too. That's not the only one. <laughs> I don't want people to get eaten. I have... I cry when I see just any kind of injustice that I can do nothing about. It's hard to stop tears. I have to turn away from disturbing things or I'm going to be broken down in tears. I could not be the person that was in charge of more people will be eaten by animals. All you have to do is say yes and we'll press this button. No, I could not be that person that said yes. I've got way too much empathy to think about all of the pain that people would feel from the loss. So, no, no, no. But, given that, you know, fantasy stuff, if you go to a fantasy world, of course, many, many people should be eaten. And, of course, on the continents of Stelden, where the human beings, the Goya, are, and Lanoa, where the Dwelin are, and Karthkog, where the Hulat are. <clears throat> I can't remember if I talked about this part. Even though the Hulat have been up in the top parts of the continent, actually, just further up, even trapped there by the volcanic activity tens of thousands of years before. Only geologically recently have things opened up so they've been able to come down into the rest of the continent. But while the 
Elvandri, the dwarves of this world, have been coming up, well, did, about 250 years ago, they came up and formed entrance, entrance, exit ruins, where they left the below the earth and be, came up onto the top because they were chased up and out by something and they will not go back down and they're everywhere which of course really quick means most of the Elvandri are dead because 70% of their world like ours is covered in water 70% of the Elvandri people came up underwater and of course immediately died all of those that came up on poles, where it's all frozen, died. All of them that came up in a place where they were unable to take care of themselves because it was such an alien place, died. After 250 years, the number of Elvandri are, they're, they're not a dying race. There are a lot of them and they are growing, but it is a fraction of the number that opened up their, their exits to escape what was chasing them up and out. 70% of them died instantly when that water came through those openings that they have. But on Karthka, because nobody really knows what's on the southern portion, and as far as they have gone exploring, the Dwelin in their ships been exploring southward, the continent has been just kept on going. There have been big bays, there have been what you might call an inland sea, but it's always been capped off and come back. So there's, they know it's going to end somewhere, so they're trying to get around it, and they know they can't go north because it all goes up into the ice. So they've got to go down and around it if they want to go and see what's over that direction on the other side. As the Hulat have been moving southward, they have been finding these Elvandri exit ruins. But no evidence of the Elvandri. None. No geological evidence, no evidence that they were there. There's just an exit, nothing else. Now, I'm not gonna push my creativity. I have no idea what's going on yet. I thought that would be interesting based on everything that's going on. That's as far as I am going to consciously work on. I have given my creativity a push and we're going to see where it goes. But Karthkog is big, seems to be mostly empty. But if there is another intelligent race down there, how could anyone try to move through and into their area? No one, not the Duelan, not the Goya, not the Hulat, are very imperialistic or colonial. They don't want to go out and grab territory. Yes, the, the Hulat are moving into Karthkov, but this is a form of the Goya live on Stelden. No one is arguing about their right to explore and live in Stelden. The Dwelin are in Lanlua, and no one is arguing against their right to live in and expand into Lanlua. So no one is arguing against the right of the Hulat to expand into and use the resources of the rest of Karthkog, their continent. But if they run into someone that's already there, what do you do then? Now, is there somebody there? I don't know yet. Once again, creativity, given that push, and now I gotta see where it goes. Cause all the stuff I've got right now has not been my going, okay, what happens here? I gotta do this, I gotta do this. No, the little settlement there in the middle of the Ogranic Oh, granite, yeah. Forest, the little settlement of Nagrat, that built over time, and I think the entirety of the setting has grown into something that 
uh, again, is far beyond what I originally started it for. Just a simple setting to do solo adventuring in. And now I'm putting as much effort into it as I have been putting into my inside outside Razor's Edge cryptid stuff. So it's fun is what I'm trying to say as well. Working on all of this world building. So thumbs up for that. And I'm at 24 minutes, so I'm going to kind of wrap this up because my sore, yeah, my sore is a little throat from talking so much. <laughs> Yay for human speech. I got to blame the gabapentin. I have to because otherwise that means I'm suffering from dementia, which is a lie. I am not suffering from dementia, I hope, and that is not a symptom. But for each and every person that watches, thank you so very, very much. If you do watch, if you could write zero sugar into the comments to let both me and the algorithm know that you have watched at least this far into the video, thank you so much. You are beautiful and awesome. And if you're a Patreon patron, I do not have the spoons. I am pushing hard to be doing this much activity in my video right now. Oh boy, it's like I got another 200 pound person laying on top of me. I feel heavy. But thank you, each and every one of my Patreon patrons. You are beautiful and awesome. I can't put your names here, but when I can, I will. I can't read your names out because I'm going to struggle not to fall asleep as soon as I stop recording. Yay! But when you look in the mirror, I want you to know that you are looking at someone who is both beautiful and awesome. Mentally. Physically emotionally and spiritually for everybody else that leaves me comments thumbs up and thank you it is greatly appreciated i read every comment i feel good when i get comments it is nice to interact with people and i try to interact more i feel good when i get comments thank you so much each and every one of you when i can't reply back i am sorry just know <coughs> just know that they are red. They are appreciated. Thank you so much. I think my tongue and, and probably the inside of my lips and stuff are, are dyed by the candy I was eating. Mm. Ugh. Ugh. I was looking at the label again. It says Harmonel Chili. <sighs> but thank you all so much. It is appreciated very, very much. Past that, I am going to, as stated I think at the beginning, I am just going to edit, render, upload. I am going to probably do a vibin video. I know I want to do something because there's so much I want to show off, both digitally and analog with everything. Well, that was us. Awesome. Everything that I own. So here's hoping I can at least get something recorded. That would be nice. So, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that is indeed a very good thing. Ah, move it over. There we go. We'll do, we'll do that part over again. Thing. I don't like the way the light did that. I'm far too reflective. Thing. <laughs> no, nobody edits quite like that. That's silly. I was just having fun. So thumbs up. Ah. Uh, I am, I don't know why I feel so heavy and so tired about this time of the day. I sure do.